Do I got the Lyme? The following video is not intended to diagnose Lyme disease. The intention of this video is to provide general awareness of this disease. It is always best to consult a physician before making any medical decisions. Sally came home from a hike in the woods and noticed a little black bug on her leg. She pulled the bug off her leg and went about her day. Some ticks, like the black-legged tick, aka the deer tick, can carry a very harmful disease called Lyme disease. Lyme disease, often misspelled as Lyme, is an inflammatory infection that can make someone very sick. The infection is caused by the entry of the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi into the host body. There are other ticks that look similar to the black-legged tick. For example, the American dog tick looks similar to the black-legged tick, but does not carry the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. If you do end up getting bit by a deer tick, there is no need to panic. It takes at least 24 hours after the tick bites you before it can transmit the disease. So it is always a good idea to check yourself for ticks after a hike in the woods. Or another option could be to take a thorough shower after getting back. Showering soon after being outdoors can greatly increase the chance of the tick dislodging itself from your body. In case you do find a tick stuck to you, do not pick it off with your hands. You must remove them using fine tipped tweezers. Do not twist or jerk the tick too much. The early symptoms of the disease are exhibited within one to four weeks after getting infected and are very similar to that of the flu, which include fever, chills, headache, fatigue, muscle and joint pain, and swollen lymph nodes. Within the first week of being bitten, Sally experiences all these mentioned symptoms. However, if not consulted by a doctor in the early stage of the disease, it can progress to stage two, where the symptoms may worsen. The rash may expand, the person may experience pain, weakness and numbness in the arms and legs, and may have mental confusion and memory loss. These are symptoms that Sally experiences after one month of being bitten by the tick. In cases where the disease is left untreated, the infected person can display new signs and symptoms. These include severe joint pain and even arthritis, neurological problems such as meningitis, and temporary paralysis on one side of the face, known as Bell's palsy. In rare cases, people may also develop heart problems such as a regular heartbeat, eye inflammation, liver inflammation, or hepatitis, and severe fatigue. Antibiotics are the main form of treatment for Lyme disease. The three main antibiotics that are used are doxycycline, sephiroxime acetyl, and amoxicillin. These drugs are used at different dosages depending on whether the individual infected with Lyme disease is a child or an adult. When Lyme disease has been left undiagnosed for a longer period of time, the antibiotic treatment is administered intravenously instead of orally due to the presence of more severe symptoms. These symptoms can be alleviated much quicker when the drugs are administered intravenously. In some cases, the drugs are also administered intramuscularly or in various combinations. If Sally notices her symptoms later on and goes to see her doctor after a couple weeks of being bitten, the doctor will probably need to administer the antibiotics intravenously or even intramuscularly, depending on her symptoms. She may also be prescribed antibiotics to be taken orally. After Sally got diagnosed with Lyme disease, she decided to go to the internet in search of more information. Instead, she came across four main misconceptions that we will debunk. There are many misconceptions when people talk about Lyme disease. Many of these misconceptions are due to a lack of knowledge on the subject. The first misconception that needs to be cleared up is the idea that every person who gets infected by the disease will develop the bullseye's rash. This is highly untrue. In studies conducted, it was found that only 30% of people who contracted the disease showed any signs of rash. Also, 9% of Lyme disease victims had the iconic bullseye's rash. Based on this data, the appearance of the bullseye's rash does not dictate whether or not someone has Lyme disease. Always see a physician first.
The second misconception that should be discussed is the treatment of the disease. There is a popular belief that Lyme disease is incurable and will cause you harm until death. This is very untrue. Lyme disease is still one of the most treatable infectious diseases. Like any infectious disease, the earlier the treatment begins, the sooner the, the infected person will be clear of the bacteria. The third misconception that is highly untrue is the idea that Lyme disease can lead to autism. This is an absurd claim and there does not seem to be any evidence to suggest that. There were a few studies that were conducted to prove that Lyme disease can cause autism, but those papers were never published. The papers that were published disproved the autism hypothesis. For example, the paper written by a Jamie and Al in 2013. This research group found no evidence to suggest that Lyme disease has any association with autism. The fourth major misconception that needs to be addressed is that many people believe that the Lyme disease can be transmitted during sexual intercourse. Although research has suggested that the bacteria that causes Lyme disease can be present in the vaginal fluid of women and sperm of men, there has been no evidence to date that suggests that the Borreliosis bacteria can be transmitted through sexual intercourse. There was a study that was conducted in 1991 where rats infected with the bacteria were allowed to mate with rats not infected with the bacteria. The results showed that rats without the bacteria that made it with the rats with the bacteria did not result in the rats acquiring the disease. Lyme disease is a treatable disease and should be taken seriously. Please remember that exhibiting any of the symptoms mentioned does not mean you have Lyme disease. Always consult a physician. Thank you.